on the car cross yep. road. Do you know her? Yep. Okay. They had, didn't they have a few Eskimo dogs too? Oh, look at that. No. No. no, but they did. You gave, I, I you gave, gave Reggie a, a couple of... No, I gave him two males. Two males. Two young yeah. males. Yeah. They, that was a long time ago. But, um, anyway. And this, this is here at the Yukon Kennel Club dog yeah. show? Mm -hmm. Do you remember how she clicked the picture? No, I don't. Remember she said we can... Let's see if I can find that number. Since you're looking at pictures. Yeah. Well, I can take the pictures with my other camera as well. This is the secret file. <laughs> this is the one that got saved. Now, I've had some really very, very good dog teams, but this was, uh, this was the team that I went on the Iditarod with, but they're putting her all Malamutes. I think there's only two Eskimo dogs in that group. But look at look at a happy bunch of Eskimo dogs there. Oh wow! Not very often you see Eskimo dogs smiling. Mine smile. Okay. <laughs> Mine smile. We've just got puppies down on the ground. They're. Uh, 12 days old today. Oh, yeah. And we had to have a cesarean section done because mm. this is what I say, Mr. Thompson. This big male was lying over the horns. You know how they go down the one? His feet were in one and his head was in the other. So he didn't know whether to go G or Ha and he screwed up the whole team. So we had to go in and get him and we figured he, the vet said he's, you know, going to be a goner. And they rubbed him and rubbed him and rubbed him and, and he did you know, and he came right to life, and now he's 12 days old, and what is he, three pounds and... Three, almost four pounds. Yeah, he's almost four pounds now. He's huge. This is a bunch of uh, Malamutes that, that I had, and that was the leader that I went on the Iditarod with. So you ran the Iditarod? Oh, yeah, twice. Wow, that I did not know. All red Malamutes? Wow, those are those are my. Uh, when I took my uh, red Malamutes into the ring, I was told there's no such thing as a red Malamute. Oh, there, there's a whole bunch of them there. there uh, Who had yeah. red Malamutes? Maybe if we put it down somewhere. Are they, I are they I old? took a red Malamute into the ring. We never had any red Malamutes, hon. Huh? Certainly, no red Malamute. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Red no. Eskimo dog. Who's that? With yeah. But there's lots of red like Eskimo Shiloh. dogs. Oh, it does look like. Does Shiloh. that ever look like Shiloh? And this looks like uh, Solo. Yeah. This is Kim right here. Yeah. Now, which one was that? No, that wasn't Kim. There's that was that head. little female that I had. No, no, this one. Yeah, that's not Kim. Oh, isn't it? No. Oh. That was that female that I that I had, and that's what the female I got from Bill Stewart. Oh, okay. Oh, Bill Stewart. I, that's a name that rings a bell. Look at yeah. look at the he, he used to live smile over here. on their face. He used to live across the car crossroad. Oh yeah, the Malamutes smile, and so do the Eskimo dogs. See the flashes. Did you say oh, they yeah. don't? No, I didn't say that. Oh, okay. I said they do. Yeah, they do. Certainly do. Oh my goodness. But. And this picture again was the Malamutes, I think. Well, Mostly Malamutes. They're all Malamutes. Those are all Malamutes. So I what year did you run the Iditarod? In 81 and 84. Oh yeah. wow. I showed you this, but I didn't point out. See, these are, this is the little tundra with the short legs. Yeah. And uh, she was his lead dog. Did, yeah. Was there two there, Anna? I can't tell. Hmm? Was there two there? Sorry, I can't hold it still. That's okay. And uh, I can't, and I can't even remember their names now. But he was a gorgeous male. That was his team that uh, that I, I went on. Oh, beautiful! I think are these the ones that Craig got? No, no, no. That was very, very early in our in our uh, Eskimo Eskimo dog, dog life. That was very early. Uh, do you, you're in, are you into horses? Uh, I had two horses, but I let them go because they were wrecking all our fences. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sold them? Yeah. 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 Well, we just sold ours. We had three beautiful horses. Uh, yeah. 
Gorgeous. Were, what kind were they? One was an Arab, white Arab, oh, wow. and um, the other one was um, taffy was um, half fjord, and we don't know what the other half was. <coughs> Actually, I'll show a picture. We have a picture of them. If you uh, have never ever been into Rose Lake, that's oh wow. The people that bought them were a French yeah. couple, and um, oh my goodness. Yeah, and they the just absolutely stunning. Just love them. They, there's the Arab. Oh my and god. There's the fjord. I like the fjords actually. Yeah. Are They're they really like nice. the Icelandics? Mm -hmm. Like what Robin yeah. has? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this one. You don't know what squirrel was, eh? I have no idea. No. Anyway. They were gorgeous horses. I think what because Mr. Thompson won't mind, but we'll, just before we leave, we'll just walk outside. Mm -hmm. And if we take the pictures outside, I won't have to use the flash, and the flash won't reflect all. Okay. That's what Here's we'll do. A little bit more. There's a whole bunch of. Those are twin girls, and they just love horses. Your daughters? Are they your daughters? No, that the, these are the people we saw. They're, they're a French couple with oh, twin okay. girls. Oh, okay. And they bought our horses. And we were so happy because... They live here in Whitehorse? They live in Mendelhall. Oh, in Mendenhall. Yeah. And they just love the horses and they treat them like royalty. So mm. we were happy as can be. Oh, the girls handed me that when they came the last time. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of things I have to do here, so excuse oh, me. Oh, no worries. We're intruding on you, so... I'm trying to find that number, but I don't think I have it. Look under Jim Craig in the in that uh, book of yours. I, I, I looked through it. Did you ever do the quest with the Eskimo dogs? No, no. I I was uh, uh, race marshal one year on the quest, but I never did the quest. <laughs> I like that. Mm -hmm. Always giving kisses. Yeah. I find that, uh, did you ever find with your Canadian Eskimo dogs, they were all kind of, like my term is called jealous Mabels? Uh, well, I, I think that's a very good way to put it. They are jealous. Uh, yeah, they are jealous. They, you pet one, you have to pet them all. That's right. That's, that's, that's right, true. yeah. I find mine are jealous Mabels. You know, it's... And when I go out there, they all have to have it, and you know, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but then Malamutes are the same way, too. They're jealous Mabels oh, as well. Oh, oh, yeah, more so than the Eskimo dogs, more yeah. vicious than the Eskimo dogs. Well, I'm sorry, but I think I've lost the I think I must have thrown it out. Well, we might be able to find it, you know, because well, why you, don't you get a directory and, and we can just go on the silly computer now and type it in his name and then yeah, where he lives it, and we yeah. might find it eh? He's, uh, yeah, I think Cochran. he could do that. Yeah, I think it is in Cochrane now. Oh it might be Cochrane now. Cochrane instead of Camor. Yeah, when I took my uh, female Alaskan Malamute, Anna, into the ring, I had a lot of problems because a lot of people were looking at me and saying, you know, there really isn't red Malamutes. Yes, there are red Malamutes. I think there is, but I don't any red ones. Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a nice Ke dog. Keegan? Ke Kylie? A typical... Kyber. Kyber. Kyber? K-Y-B-E-R. Kyber. What does that mean? Does that mean something? Or? Doesn't mean anything. Kybosh? <laughs> no. It's just a name we liked. Wait, it? Oh, beautiful. Yeah, he was. I don't know if you wanted to. Yeah, I think if you get on the computer, you could find him. Can you get these ones? Oh, that looks familiar. Well, she showed me how to do pictures, remember? I know, but I can't remember. Menu? Yeah.
Did you did you um, know Ken McGrory? Uh, no. 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 What's his name? Ken McGrory. We never met him. No. He's in uh, Northwest Territories. That's uh, yeah, but that name sounds familiar. Yeah. He wrote the thesis of the Canadian Eskimo dog. You yeah. know. Yeah. And had it published and. Uh, am I going too fast or? No, it's fine. Oops. I've got a whole bunch of uh, papers written for, but, but for the army on Canadian Eskimo dogs. Oh yeah. Do you still have them? I think so. What's that? The papers that he wrote for the for the army on the Canadian Eskimo dogs. I never wrote them, but or some expert did. See, and that's the other thing I'm, I would like to start promoting the dogs, saying, I think the Canadian Eskimo dogs would do very well as search and rescue dogs. They're, they're smart. They've got good noses. You know what I'm saying? Could a yeah, person I not... I don't know that that's their cup of tea. But, you know, I mean... Uh, a good work dog has to be kind of slow in the head. You know, mm -hmm. uh, all he wants to do is pull. It's, it's not a, a big desire to please you or anything like that. It's just that they're... they're but would they not be good like in a search and rescue mm, kind of a situation? I, I, I it's 40 it. below and the much. wind is blowing and... I, I doubt it very much. Really? Okay. See, much. but that's why I'm here to ask you those kind of questions because, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't want to try and... I think if that were the situation, you'd see that the Eskimos would still be using them when they... Some of these young guys go out on the snow machines and get lost. Yeah, that's true. I mean, don't uh, if the Eskimo dogs had been trained to be sort of uh, rescue dogs, they would have been. Okay. So I think the band. what you're trying to say is probably they're better at finding food than they would be at finding a person. They are. They are. So if you smelled them. like seal or moose meat or something, you might be able to be found. I'm not sure even about that. <laughs> really? I, I, okay. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't want to make a statement that says that they're good for anything other than sled dogs. But they are very, very good sled dogs. Now, what, actually, what got us into them was um, we had uh, quite a few Malamutes, and um, and I was uh, in charge of the dog sled races at Rendezvous one year. And when the Rendezvous was over, the Caribou Carnival was just beginning, so they asked me if I'd go to Ed to uh, Yellowknife and see what the Caribou Carnival had to offer that we weren't doing in the rendezvous. So I went over there and I had met a ex-RCMP inspector in Whitehorse at a friend's place and I looked him up and I said, you know Bill Carpenter? And he said, yeah, I know him real well. So I said, would you introduce me to him? So he introduced me to this guy and uh, it intrigued me the way that he handled these dogs because he had this whole team of dogs uh, more or less on display, not really being worked, not in the races. Because the races, uh, you, you've probably been to the Caribou Carnival races. It's a, they're a long, hard, real hard race. He opened the, he took this, he had a big stake truck and he took the stakes down off the back and he said, okay boys, and, and all the dogs jumped in one after the other into the back of the truck. And, and, with, and with the harnesses on. And so he said, I'll see you at my house in an hour. And I said, where's your house? Well, he says, it's up there, he says, where the link fences are. He said, you'll find it. And so then I went up and I met him. And it, everybody that I knew had tried to buy Eskimo dogs, and nobody was able to buy an Eskimo dog from Carpenter. He was, uh, and he could be a miserable bastard. And anyway, by the time that the uh, three days, I spent three days over there, 
and I was just enthralled the way that he, what he did with Eskimo dogs. He had one pen with 18 Eskimo dogs that were all a year old. And um, he just threw, and he fed them fish. And he th threw in a wheelbarrow load of fish, and the fight was on. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, uh, every, one dog, there's a, a dominant one in every pack, and he's running around getting this fish, and then somebody would grab a fish, and he'd run to drop this one and run over to grab that one, and somebody would grab that fish, and I mean, it was pandemonium. <laughs> I imagine it would be. So, so anyway, I said, you know, what? why is the old dog in here? There was one old dog. He said, well, he sort of keeps order. So I said, well, would you mind if I went in and petted them? He said, do you want to go in there with them? And I said, sure. He said, go ahead. So I went in with this bunch of young dogs and by the time that uh, the afternoon was up I think I would petted all of these wild and nasty young Eskimo dogs but he had another pen with about 30 dogs in it from six weeks old to probably two years old. Wow. And Holy they smokes. just got along just so well it wasn't even funny. So he, they need, yeah, that's what I found too, is they need to be in these groups, you know, their family groups and that. Like. Well, we, we put them on a chain out here after they were a certain size mm -hmm. because it was too hard to handle them individually. If you, unless you're set up that way, it's, it's pretty difficult, but we put them on a chain. Did you ever have them in kennels? In what? Kennels. Oh, you know, yeah. chain link kennels? Oh, an ordinary dog house affair? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. He's saying, though, they had dog houses, but did you have, like, a big pen for them? Like, did they have individual pens, too? Oh, no. No. Well, we did have yeah. for, for the, some of the females. Yeah. Um, Walt Disney Film Crew may never cry wolf here. Okay. And they left a bunch of really nice pens. Mm -hmm. So we did. We did use those for, uh, for the most mostly for the females. Yeah. And individual pets. Yeah. Did you increase um, the when when you had a female that you were going to breed? Did you like increase her food before she was bred, and then no. give her extra while she was gestation, and then give her extra when she after she had the pups? And anything special? Did you give anything we special? Did nothing special. Nothing special. Uh, and and we had, well, I'm sure Carpenter didn't either. I'm sure that Carpenter didn't either because we got the first two bitches from him. From, we got one bitch one, one week from Carpenter, and, uh, and he had a little note. Uh, she's going to have a litter in a week. And... Uh, then the, the, we got home one day from town and there was a note that he shipped another bitch that was going to have a litter in two weeks. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> so now we got... Uh, unrelated bitches uh, though I would uh, presume. Oh yeah, unrelated. So then we've got um, the f f film crew had the wolves right, right here. and. Um, I got home one day and they said, uh, I just got a, f a phone call from Carpenter. He s sent you, uh, now I'm not sure whether it was six or whether it was eight, uh, male dogs. Uh, oh, my <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And uh, you'll have to go to the airport and pick them up. Well, I went to the airport and they were the worst looking bunch of dogs I've ever seen in my life. They were drugged so bad that they could hardly stand. The only way you could handle them. And so I had to buy chains and all the rest of it. Anyway, I turned them loose in the pen over there along with a bunch of Malamutes. And uh, after they, the drugs were wore off, they were fabulous. Fabulous dogs. So I'm now in the Eskimo dog business. In a fast way. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, that happens. You double overnight. We had this one huge male. He was 110 pounds and he was really like a nice wide solid body low to the ground he was what i would like for an epitome of an eskimo dog he was my foundation guy he was named jasper that's, that's the wrong style hmm that's the wrong style the wrong style yep that's that's the wrong one to use for a stud dog well i did because i didn't have any other choice yeah, yeah. and we had like when we when we moved here because we lived in ontario we moved here and we flew and we had to give him like triple doses of stuff to get him to do anything. And there was this little Indian man with a cart in Toronto Airport. And he came too because it was three hours for us to get from where we live to Toronto. And he was like, rrr, rrr, and the whole thing was shaking. It was an extra large crate, right? And he said, do you have any more tranquilizer for your dog? <laughs> right? It was just, yeah. And they were fabulous too, as uh, Canada North or Canadian yeah. North, and that was fabulous. Yeah, too. that. Do you know where to plug that in? This here? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, uh, there was a little clip over here. You remember, uh, right she flipped it open. We're, we're right here. So I think it's. Let me it that way or this way in there. I don't have my glasses on. Is it still running? Mm -hmm. Oh well. Yeah, I don't care. You don't care. We can edit. There we go. Yeah. Thank you. Did you find the plug? I'm just going to ask um, Mr. Thompson if I could just plug yeah, it in over here. Yeah, my... Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, no, talking about the uh, Greenland dogs are the ones that I was thinking about. Okay, okay yep. Because there's a big controversy whether the Greenland dog and the Canadian dog, the Canadian Eskimo dog, are one and the same. Well, that I controversy, think. I think, came from this. French-Canadian woman. Genevieve Moncombreau. Yeah. And I'll correct you, she's not French-Canadian. She's French from France. Okay. And she lives in, um, outside of Manitoba. Okay. And she single-handedly has really, really separated the people who, like me, want to register with our dogs and also work them and maybe show them once in a while, and the people who don't want anything to do with it, so. Well, oh. Why do you worry about it? I mean, first of all, the Canadian Kennel Club are quite interested in in you because you want to register your dogs, and that's how they make money. That's right. Uh, so. Uh, but at the same time, and that's something that you must believe in. There's no. How can you prove that the Canadian Eskimo dog is a purebred Canadian Eskimo dog unless it's registered? Oh no, I'm. Don't. don't I'm, so the I'm, Canadian. I'm all for registering them. Yeah. I'm yeah. all in favor of registering them. Exactly. But you have to. I don't want to see uh, some of the ones that they want registered registered. Ah, okay. Because they're they're not Eskimo dogs. They're a mixed breed. See, and right now the big kerfuffle over in England and some other places is they are bringing in the Greenland dog because they're saying. That the green that there's no difference between the Greenland dog and the Canadian Eskimo there dog. Is, there that is. they're but they're they're saying that they're they are exact same dog. So we should be able to take our purebred Canadian Eskimo dogs and breed them to the Greenland dogs because they're both the same. The Canadian Kennel Club doesn't believe that. The Canadian Kennel Club says the Greenland dog is a Greenland dog, Canadian Eskimo. Well, so what do, is the difference then, do sir? Is look at them. So what is the difference then, sir? Why, why is, are they two different breeds? Well, the Greenland dog is probably averages 110 or 115 pounds. A good work on a Greenland dog. Okay. And they're blocky, heavy, big-headed dogs. A good Eskimo dog probably weighs 90 pounds in top working shape. And that would be a big one. And they're built totally differently, and that's what the, there's the three styles of Eskimo dogs: the short, blocky ones. Right, that you said. Yep. Uh, like uh, like thunder, your lead dog here. Yep. The long-legged ones, and the ones that are built that are fairly long, big around. You have a hell of a time finding a harness for some of them, Tell because me. they're so big around. 
and they got big heavy shoulders and necks, and they're green. They're in essence back to the Greenland style. Okay, so now that's what he pull, was saying earlier. And it, for work dogs, they're probably wonderful. So maybe you have to have two more Canadian Eskimo dogs to do the same amount of work if you're pulling big loads that, that you would have if you were having Greenland dogs. Okay, so that's the difference. It's just like you hear so many people like this Guinevere that as far as I'm concerned, she doesn't know a darn thing, but whatever, that's just my opinion. <laughs> Well, she set herself up as an expert, and, 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 I, and I don't think she has two brains to rub together when it comes to the Eskimo dogs. But at least that's just my opinion. It makes us feel good, though, that we share the same opinion, because we've had a lot of problems with her, you know, trying oh, yeah, to really, she's it's really a very voice Yeah, very, very, and the problem being, too, is, and I called the Kennel Club on this, because I said, she publicly says that she will not register dogs. She publicly says she doesn't want them in dog shows. She publicly says none of them belong in the south. All of them belong in the high Arctic, where they're supposed to be. Okay, And I can compromise on some of those, but not the registration. right? And the Canadian, Cup, Canadian Kennel Club, when, when they were publishing their you know, year dogs and annual and their monthly magazine, they'd only run Genevieve's articles in there. And I'd, so I'd phone them and I'd say, well, why are you promoting this woman's writings when she's going out and saying you shouldn't register dogs and stuff? You know what I got? I got, well, she writes a good story because that's what she does for a living. And I'm like, sorry, that doesn't make sense to me yeah. because you're putting it out to the general public, all this misinformation. Because I know my Canadian Eskimo dogs, they're loving. I brought, I have four kids. None of my kids were ever bitten or attacked by my Eskimo dogs. They were protected by my dogs, but not, they all rode in the sled as babies. You know, I put them, load them all up in the sled to try and get them to sleep in the afternoon. And I have one boy with his head coming out and hitting the snow banks like this, right? And we had great days of sledding and, and stuff like that. Family recreational sledding, never a problem with them, you know? Well, so, I don't know. I just... I just don't have too much time for her, but that's just me. Yeah. I, I imagine you never got into the politics of all of this either. You just went ahead and did your your thing and Yeah, I I got into the politics of it. Oh, did you? Yeah, I oh. was responsible for Park Carpenter registering all the goddamn Canadian Eskimo dogs that he raised. Oh, really? See, I didn't know mm -hmm. that. But I thought the Canadian Kennel Club, see, I was under the impression that... I was the one that was responsible for the Canadian Kennel Club registering all the dogs that Carpenter raised. Well, that is that is interesting. That is absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Carpenter withheld all the paperwork because he had to sign the paperwork for any of the dogs that he had registered. Mm -hmm. And he never sent the paperwork in. So you went and made mm -hmm. sure that it was done. So I spent a lot of time talking to uh, a very, very nice lady in the Canadian Kennel Club. Dorothy Walker. Dorothy Walker, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I met her once. I think I met her once. Mm -hmm. wow. but, uh, well, but how, how long was your, uh, what was the age of your oldest dog? How, what was the length of time that you're... You know, from birth till they finally went over the Rainbow Bridge, as, as they say nowadays. What was your well, oldest Canadian I, Eskimo I dog? Can't, I can't really say, and I'll tell you why I can't say. My feeling is that if a dog gets to the point in age when it can no longer look after itself,